Hi there, it's Stephanie, and I told you I was going to be doing a little something called Sofa Talk with Stephanie. So we're going to be answering some questions tonight. We're starting off with a very dear friend of mine, Frank. He has been my personal trainer for 13 years, and I just want him to talk a little bit about what he has seen on the show and what he knows about me personally. Frank? So one of the things uh, when I have, have watched the show, uh, one of the things that, you know, you had mentioned is the inaccurate portrayals of, you know, of yourself. And, you know, I just wanted to say that I've known Stephanie for, uh, 13 years now that we've worked together. I have never seen her on any kind of drug. <laughs> I've never seen her drunk. Um, that just, you know, is not her and it's not something that would function in our working relationship if, if she was on, on drugs or, or drunk. So I think these inaccurate portrayals are just very unfair. Yeah. The other thing that when we were discussing this, Frank, that mm -hmm. I thought you were very accurate when you said, Stephanie, if you supposedly are taking drugs and alcohol and you haven't even had a speeding ticket in 20 years, you're the luckiest woman alive. I oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. When yeah, was so when we were talking to the other day, if it, if things were accurate the way the portrayal is, yeah, you you would have to be the luckiest person on the planet. In other words, you, you know, not alone. How are you supposed to be a successful businesswoman if this is what your mode of operation is? You know, it would be impossible. You know, you work long hours to build super successful business. Very true. Very true. Well, I thank you for saying that. And the last thing I want to talk about is you said that, you know, you did, you know, I mean, you're one of my very best friends. We're together three times a week mm -hmm. working out. We talk about a great deal. Yeah. And one of the things that you had said is, yeah, you can tell Stephanie, you were exhausted because there were times I was working 15 hours a day. And especially after I was bitten by hundreds of bugs and yeah. my medical doctor that has worked on me happens to be one of your clients and yes. I give you permission to tell what what he has said about me having to be hooked you know to IVs and stuff so go ahead you have my full permission to talk about my medical yeah yeah I mean working under those conditions would have been brutal you know not only the the long hours but then you know when you're being uh, I, uh, forgive me, but I don't remember the name of what, you know, what, what happens when you are bitten by that specific bug over time. But I know that that had a, a drastic impact on you health wise. So you put, you take in effect the, uh, exhaustion from the long hours, plus having to endure, uh, being bitten by the bugs over, you know, over and over and over again. And then the after effects of that and having to seek medical, you know, treatment from it. These are like the worst possible conditions to be working under and still did pretty damn good in my opinion, you know, so. <laughs> and again, that went on for three months after I returned from Belize, I had yeah. to seek medical attention, going yeah. to be hooked to IVs for hours at a time. Yeah. Yeah. Because even when you would, you know, we'd start to work out, I'm, I'm like, Frank, I, I, I feel like I'm 90. I am so yeah, sick, and he said, yeah. Stephanie, you are so full of inflammation, and yeah. it even affected my vocal cords where I yep. sounded like I was smoking cigarettes, and yeah. Dr. Bosch said, it, it is, you are totally inflamed, not only your entire body mm -hmm. from what has happened to you in Belize, but even your vocal cords, yeah. and not to mention, it was the exact same night I was sexually assaulted by Ryan. That was 48 hours after I got there, and I decided to be a trooper and yeah. play play it out. I played it out, and they decided to do a character assassination yeah. on me. And like, I think you need some kind of award for uh, <laughs> making it through all of that. You know? I do, too. It's pretty I amazing. Do. <laughs> I do, too. So, listen, you know, I know you're super busy. I know you've got another doctor that you're meeting with to train here now that you're leaving. Yes. But you know what, Frank? I, again, you've always been a great friend. You're a very Christian man. You would never lie for me, nor would you ever lie no. for anyone. No. And I appreciate you taking the time to come and 
clarify what you know about my medical background because you have so many degrees that you work very closely with my medical doctor. Yes. So you've cleared up that yes. and you've cleared up the hell I endured from the yep. possibility of getting leishmaniasis and my mm -hmm. organs could have possibly shut down. People do die from leishmaniasis. Thank God Dr. Bosch caught everything in time. Mm -hmm. And thank you for clarifying that of all of the hours that you and I spend together, you've never even seen me drunk or tipsy or pop a pill of any kind. And for that, I thank yeah. you. Well, it's my pleasure to do it. You're a wonderful person and I hate to see your character assassinated in any way. So thank it's you. my pleasure. Thank you, Frank. You bet. So I'm basically here to tell you that it ended up being the exact opposite. So much of it was contrived. And one of the very first things I want to tell you is during production, Ryan and I did break up. Um, I immediately called the producers and said, um, Ryan and I are finished. We are not going to be on the show. And Via, the field producer, immediately said, oh no, oh no, you're going to go on. And I said, Via, he is now bribing me. Yes, you know I've given him thousands of dollars to keep a roof over his head, to feed their family, to keep their cable on. And I did that out of the goodness of my heart. And instead, he then wanted more money and said, you know, I really don't understand the show you want me on. I need more money. Um, I was not going to be bribed. We broke up. And I said, the show is finished. She still, Vaya sent a crew here of about 12 people from New York and everywhere. And they hounded me for three days, calling constantly. You need to do this. You need to pay Ryan. Um, we, you, what does it matter to you, Stephanie, if it is being paid, if you're giving him money, you're giving him money all the time anyway. What do you care if he's bribing you? This is gonna make you famous. And I said, Vaya, I've told you from day one, I don't give a crap about being famous. I'm doing this because I knew it would triple my business, which I will admit it has. It has done exactly what I thought it would do, but I was not going to proceed until they continually harassed me and then I thought, well, she's correct. Um, I'm going to be a trooper. I'm going to continue on. I have put so many hours into this and I would not receive a dime. She reiterated that you only get paid for a show you're on. So having said that, the show went on. So now I would like to introduce a couple of the people that were actually on the show, one being my medical assistant, Pam and let her tell a little bit about her experience and how frustrated she was at the filming from them wanting to spin the words. Go ahead, this is Pam, my medical assistant. You probably recognize her from the show. Hi, um, I, I don't want <laughs> um, Well, right from the get-go, it was constantly telling us to, can you stop and reword that? And, and asking us questions like, doesn't that make you mad? You know, say this, say that. And I was like, no, it doesn't make me mad. I don't even know Ryan. And they would keep asking questions over and over and over again until I can see how some of the people that are on that show actually are complaining about their significant other or about their friends or whoever because they just keep on with it. Finally, I was like, you know what? No, I'm not saying that. I'm gonna say what I wanna say. They allowed me to, but they seriously were almost trying to trick you into saying things that you didn't want to say. Very true. Shannon, and again, if you remember Shannon from the show, she was eight months pregnant at the time. Now she has had the little guy, King. And, and he wants to tell his side of the story. But uh, Shannon, um, did what did you experience when when you went to tell when we were all sitting at the desk being filmed? 
Yeah, so it was um, for Ryan and I both. My sister was also on the show. Um, and her name is Ryan. Let's just yeah, keep so everything our, straight. Yes, yeah, my sister Ryan and I both were um, in the office and did um, did a, a segment. And we were both told multiple times. Um, times <laughs> we both were told multiple times um, to really um, push the concept of Ryan, Stephanie's Ryan, um, coming here specifically for her money, um, and also really push the idea that, um, like they asked a lot of times about the type of men that Stephanie dates. They wanted us to talk about that a lot too, and kind of um, push the idea of um, being a cougar or um and they also wanted us to talk about like if she like if she's dated um other men that have only wanted her for her money things like that and it's um which really not isn't necessarily what was happening it was a real relationship the entire time so um they but we were supposed to be extremely angry about the idea that he was coming for her money and a yeah. very very good point the very mm -hmm. first day of taping when I was being interviewed, so I was by myself, they said, Stephanie, what kind of people do you date? And I said, you know what? Age is just a number. I've dated them 25 years older, which I have, and I've dated them 25 years younger, which I did. So they, of course, took that out of the entire scenario, and they had me say, I'm a cougar and I own it, mm -hmm. which I do. Because again, like I said, age is just a number. I have dated them that young. But I have also dated men my age, several men my age. Mm -hmm. And I have dated many men, again, as high as 25 years older than me. So the, why did they take that out? Right away, they wanted Stephanie to be the cougar, the one that is always on the prowl for the young men, which is totally, totally inaccurate. So again, words being put in my mouth. You've heard it now from three of us. Mm -hmm. All three of us were, no, 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 that's not what we want to hear. And for that, things get misconstrued right away. I've heard I just so you know I hire four people to go through comments and whatnot so those of you that like to throw comments hoping I see it I don't because I have four people that I've hired they get rid of negative comments because you know what I don't I don't need it I don't care who who I care about are the people who know me who know what I'm all about and for that I don't want, I don't keep my comments on unless I follow you. You're not allowed to leave a comment. Sorry if you don't like that. I went on this show because I knew what it would do for my business, okay? So having said that, I wasn't out seeking fame, never wanted to be famous. And when I say, why do you pay us such a little amount? They'd say, we're making you famous. And I'm like, I don't want to be famous. And I said, if you show me at my office, show the name of my business, show what Pam and I do on a daily basis, I'll do the show. That was one contingency I did have for the show because that was the only reason I was doing the show was because the exposure for my business. So having said that, again, something else that was very, very contrived. I don't, I, I can be called a cougar because I do date them young, but I date age, age is just a number. I date them all over, but boy, oh boy, they took that out, mm -hmm. didn't they? <laughs> so anything else, Shannon, that you can think of that when you were there that they wanted you to say or do, they want you to act a certain way that um, that you weren't planning on acting? Um, I mean, uh, it, it seemed like every take that we did, they stopped us. Mm -hmm. Like we would, we would tape for, you know, maybe five minutes and then they would stop us and they would say, now say it like, say it more angry or say it more upset or, 
Um, how did you really feel about that? Didn't didn't you feel more upset for Stephanie? You know, like really try to like stir up your emotions the entire time. Um, and and it was really in every scene. Like there wasn't really uh, right. there wasn't really any yeah. takes that were just like all the way through a right. whole conversation right. that we were able to have. So like you know, it was none of it was really that authentic. Um, like you said, it was probably like. Yeah, 90% it was contrived. Like, like three minutes of the whole show was that, and we were there for what, seven or eight hours? Yeah, yeah. And yes. over yeah, and over one, again. Yeah, and at the end of the day, section. I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then when I saw Stephanie on the show, and even with, with the other girls on the show, and you, you see them starting to get a little bit. Cranky. Cranky. <laughs> it's because they've been doing it for 12 to 14 hours. It's not because they're just cranky. Right. And it, like sure. me, I'm like probably the most laid back person and they were ticking me off. Like I, I had had it. I was about ready to start getting snippy with them. And I was like, oh boy, <laughs> right. people are going to think I'm a mean person. But <laughs> man, you can only take so much of someone trying to get you to say something. Mm -hmm. And telling you to reword you. When I say something, I say it how I would say it. I can't say it how someone else says it. Yeah, they definitely want to build the character for each person in the show. <laughs> like, yep. make the character how they want the character to be. Absolutely, absolutely. And you, us talking about how many hours, again, when I did, I was told, and I have it written down, because I take copious notes when I'm going to get into a new project, um, they said, you will be filmed 9 to 10 hours a day. I was filmed anywhere from 12 to 15 hours a day. Mm -hmm. And again, and that's even after traveling internationally. One of the parts that they did cut out is we missed two airplanes due to the fact that they had forgotten some camera equipment from New York. So we had to carry all of this extra camera equipment. And because of that, you have to check in three hours when you're going internationally because of what you could hide in the camera equipment. So we missed two planes, which they never reimbursed me for. Um, I had to pay extra for luggage because I did have a first class ticket and I'm allowed to have three bags at 70 pounds a piece. And then after we had to rebook, they didn't have any first class left. So I had to sit in the back of the plane, which Again, twice I had to, we missed two planes due to this. And then they only allow you to have 50 pound bags. So not only did I have to buy two more airplane tickets, I then had to pay extra for every one of my bags because as you know, they had me take loads of gifts for Ryan. And yes, I had purchased those gifts for Ryan. I was bored during coronavirus. So, and at that time we were still getting along. Um, he has, he hadn't been bribing me money. I was generously giving money to he and his family to keep them alive since none of them had a job. So, you know, that whole thing was absolutely a fiasco. I knew right then it was going to be bad, very bad from that point on because I thought they're not going to want to take responsibility for anything. After I left Belize, they went ahead and hired Ryan for two bears all. So I called Via the field producer. I said, wait a minute, you're hiring rapist Ryan to come, up, come after you had hired a full-time police officer with a gun to protect me. The minute I was on the plane, you had Ryan back uh, to hear his story. And as you know, I have told in the Instagram story that I was, it was stealthing, which that, which again is 10 years in prison in Belize had I pursued it. And, um, basically they hired rapist Ryan to come back to tell his side and his side if you've watched it, he said, Stephanie does that all the time. She brings condoms, doesn't make me wear it. She's crazy. So instead of protecting a woman who was sexually assaulted on Sharp Entertainment set, basically because they were the ones paying for these very luxurious hotels that we were in, um, instead of protecting me, they hired rapist Ryan to come back 
to then say, I'm crazy. And boy, did that set the scenario. All of a sudden, I'm, you know, telling, I'm asking people, what, what are they saying? And this, now the narrative has changed, Stephanie. Um, it went from you being controlling because he was being called 14 day, times a day by you, which they made me do. I don't call smart men 14 times a day, let alone call Ryan 14 times a day. I've said that many of times. And they, you know, went ahead and did that set up to make me controlling. So it went from Stephanie's controlling, uses her money to control Ryan. No, I was feeding the family. And again, I'd call Ryan once or twice a week just to make sure he was okay. Um, and then, like I said, they had him back to get his side. I have never been invited to do any of the Bears All, any of the Tell All, any of the spinoff shows. They know I'm honest. Like I said, I signed an NDA, but never did I sign that I would lie for them. And that is why the main reason I am here tonight is to say they are complete liars. I believe they're behind this whole fabrication that of me being controlling and then also that I do pills and alcohol and substance substance abuse and all of the things which are extremely untrue. Mm -hmm. um, Rick, who is one of my best friends, he's here. He can attest to me um, and what he sees on a regular basis because I probably hang out with him more than I hang out with anybody else. So. Rick? Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous because when we hang out, you end up driving me home. <laughs> and I don't think I've ever seen you drunk, um, you know, maybe uh, tipsy here or there. But, um, yeah, it's, that blows my mind that they could even come up with that. So, And I uh, work at a bar, and you'll come in once in a while before you go to a show or a concert and maybe have one drink and go to the show, but you never hang around or come back after the show. You know, it's like a one and done scenario. So, mm -hmm. you know, even here when we hang out, you might have, you know, a glass of wine or White Claw or something, but you know, that's it. So it's uh, crazy to see that on there. And, and I wonder where they, you know, came up with the footage. They must just film so much to be able to find it where you look that tired, where they could spin oh, it to yeah. where, you, where you look like that. Right, yeah. So. Well, she was bitten by all those bugs. Yes. She had to have steroids and antihistamines. Her face was still puffy, so that's a big part of it, of the looking tired. Plus, they're filming for 15 hours. I mean, anybody would look like that. I mean, when I watched her, I was like, oh my goodness, she's so exhausted. Mm -hmm. And then you hear people saying, oh, she's on drugs. And I was like, well, I guess if somebody didn't know you, Maybe they could put that spin on it, but my first thought was she is so exhausted. You look like you were just going to drop out and fall asleep. Right. And I can just imagine, in, because they had you sitting there for hours and hours and hours. It's like by the time you're just a zombie, you're just like, oh, I'm about done with this. So, and I work for you, so obviously I know mm -hmm. if you're doing drugs or drinking and... The first thing that you ask me when I walk in the door is, do you want a water? It's like our drink of choice. Drink of choice. <laughs> drink is of our, choice. Is our is water, 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 right? And, yeah. and obviously, you've never yeah. seen me pop any pills right, or right. do anything like that. And yeah, no. Yeah. No. So, you know, again, I did look very tired on the show. I admit that. And a lot of people, you know, I've heard say, well, she couldn't even keep her eyes open. Well, take those bright lights and shine them in your face for hours at a time, 12 to 15 hours at a time, and especially when it gets dark. If you notice a lot of the time when I'm going like this, it's when it's dark. And a lot of the time when you saw me getting interviewed, and my interview dress is that bright yellow one. A lot of times I would go like this. But it was after filming 12, 13, 14 hours, and I was exhausted. And those bright lights affect me greatly. I have something called keratoconus is what it's called. And it's something where 
bright light affects you greatly. So have that, have it where you're filming that many hours, having that light shine very brightly on you. And yes, there were times I would go, like what I'm doing now, I'm exaggerating it right now, but that's what was going on. The, the lights were terrible. Uh, it dries out my eyes. That's why if, if when you saw the Maseratis on the show, if you see how dark those are tinted, those are tinted much darker than what's legally allowed in Michigan. I carry the doctor paperwork right in my vehicle that says due to the light and how it affects Stephanie, she is allowed to have darker windows than the average person in Michigan. So, you know, that was something else that added to the look. Mm -hmm. um, I'm shocked at if you, if someone really looks at it, when I was around here and when I was talking on the phone and conversing with others, you didn't see me going like this. It was during interview when that bright light was on me for hours at a time, um, you know, or after when I got to Belize and it was very emotional because I had broken up with Ryan and they're like, you're getting off the plane, fake it, get ready to fake it. You need to act like you still love him. And I didn't still love him. Here's a man who is bribing me and they're like, fake it, fake it. Come on now, fake it. We don't wanna to have to do this take again. You need to fake it. So I run off the plane and, you know, he hands me the balloons and say, I love you. And I'm thinking, what's on the backside? Hey, give me $500 for this balloon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm getting all these calls about, you know, right, right. the whole bribing thing. And I don't understand oh. this show. And actually the producer flew over three days before me. Mm -hmm. They couldn't find Ryan. Cause then he said, I'm not doing the show. Yeah, and I'm just like, away. fine. So the producer's calling me and like, what's his address? And addresses in Belize are a little bit sketchy. It's very hard. Not all roads are marked. Not all homes are marked with addresses. Mm -hmm. So what they did, they said is they took a big picture of Ryan into the grocery stores. And who, do you know him? And do you know him? And finally someone said, yes, go down that street, turn left, and it's he's the house on the corner. Thankfully, he happened to be sitting on the porch and they found him. So they called me and they said, get on the plane. We found him. Oh my because goodness, I think nice. what happened then is the illusion, you know, the cameraman there, the audio there. And then I thought, he thought, wow, this is something. I think I will go along with it. Probably bribe Stephanie later. Who right. had told him, this will be great for you. Mm -hmm. If you get on TV, this will be great for you. And then all of a sudden, like, oh, I'm not sure I understand this. And I think you need to send me a little bit more money. I'm like, no, no, show's over, no. Yep. But again, they came and I actually consider it harassment. When you send a team of 12 people and they call you three, you know, three days in a row, yep. reiterate. Paying someone because you care about them and their family is right. one thing. It's helping them. Yes, not exactly. paying them. Yes, exactly. I am helping them keep a roof over their head. Right. They don't have the protections that we do in the United States. Right. If when they, when they didn't have the money for rent, the landlord was knocking at the door. You've got forty eight hours. Get out. I wasn't going to let that happen, and I wasn't going to let them right. starve to right. death. I cared about that family. I truly mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. um, but it's different when all of a sudden he's you know, shaking you down. Yeah, he's shaking yeah. me down. Yeah. He was like, blinding. he's blackmailing you. He is blackmailing yes. you. And 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 I thought they would be so understanding, mm -hmm. but no, pay him anyway. You're this close. They don't Stephanie. care. They just want to get the footage for the show. They wanted the footage for the show. You're this close, Stephanie. Come on. Remember what you said. This is gonna what this is gonna do for your business. Come on. Right, right. You keep thinking about that. You keep thinking about that and. You know, the, the, more, more, the more footage we get, the more you're going to get paid because the more episodes you're going to be on, and then they don't pay you. And then they don't pay me. Exactly. And they people don't. might notice how contrived it is by just the outfit changes that were. Right. And the hair you know, changes they, yeah. all in the because same of the conversation. Yes. You'd like, have different outfits on, or the hair would be different. So yes. they splice things together yeah. to make it look a certain way yeah. that was shot in a completely different scene. 
Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Probably different day. I want to talk a little bit now about Harris and how Harris came into the picture because they have blown that one up. That story is about 2% true. So what happened is I said, I'm not sure, even though they've found Ryan, I don't trust him enough to go ahead and go through with the thing. So I did call Harris and I said, hey, listen, I need a favor. I'm getting on a plane to Belize. I have no idea if Ryan is going to stick with it or not. He's been, you know, bribing me for money, wanting more money. We have broken up and they're making me continue the show. So I said to Harris, if I get there and he doesn't show, will you fill in for him? Because obviously everybody knew about Harris because everyone knew that Ryan had cheated on me many of times. And one mm -hmm. night when I threw Ryan out and said, it's done, it's over for good, I ended up being with, with Harris. With, with, uh, I was with Harris. So everybody knew who Harris was. Mm -hmm. So I had him in the back burner just again because I thought if I'm going to Belize, we're going to film this thing, you know, but who knows when Ryan's going to start trying to shake me down for more money. And I wasn't going to do it then. Right. You know? No, absolutely no way was that going to happen. So what happened is, again, 48 hours after I was there, the night I begged for two and a half hours, this is all on their tape at Sharp Entertainment. It is illegal for them to erase that, so they still have that footage. Me begging and pleading, I'm being eaten from head to toe by sand flies. I'm miserable, I'm in pain. I'm begging you to let me off set. Same night that that happened, and they're like, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes, 10 more minutes. Two and a half hours later, they let me off set. And that was the same night I was sexually assaulted by Ryan. Mm -hmm. So I get up the next day, I let them know that I've been sexually assaulted. Um, I did get a call from the producer and the attorney, and they said, we have to shut down pr production. If you say it, now that you've been sexually assaulted, you need to let us know, and we have to cancel everything. Everybody has to get on the planes, and we all have to go back to the United States. And I said, well, let me call Harris. You know, I, I felt badly. I had heard, I had become friends with a lot of the people that were audio, video, and whatnot. And due to COVID, a lot of them were so low on cash. Um, I felt I felt responsible. I thought there is this huge crew here. And, you know, can I go on? You know, I felt I felt miserable. I was in pain, terrible pain from all of the bug bites. But I thought, well, if Harris will fill in, I'll try and stick it out. And so I did. So uh, as you saw on the show, I did call Harris and Harris came and again, he stayed with me and they totally turned that around that I had said to Harris before, if you ever want, you know, to come to America on a work visa, never on a K-1, he has a family. You saw me on the phone with Emma. You mm -hmm. saw his the four children swimming in the water. But instead, they had me say, after what, a couple days with him, I'm going to have him come uh, to America on a K-1 visa. Meanwhile, they are making me look like an idiot by filming him saying, oh, everybody has big homes in America. Everyone's rich. I could very well get a lot of money and support my entire family, which again, I had said to him, if you ever came here on a work visa for a while, you could send the money home, you know, and help the entire family. And he was, he and Emma were breaking up all the time. They, she would leave, take the children, move out, move in, move out, move in. And again, I know all this, remember, because I dated Ryan for three years. So I knew Emma and Ryan just as long as, you know, I knew Emma and Harris. I knew Emma and Harris just as long as I knew Ryan. So, you know, 
they they totally contrived that on the show then to make it look like it was a setup. It wasn't a setup. I mean, I sent right. a box. Well, how big was mm -hmm. that box? At it was Christmas? Huge. huge. Like 37 pounds, mm -hmm. thousands of dollars. I sent to not only to the kids, but to Emma, a brand new computer for Christmas. I sent Harris all new shoes because he was out growing his work shoes and his tennis shoes. So, and you know, it was a huge box of toys. They didn't have any money for Christmas. So it was their first Christmas where they got this huge box and Emma, Harris, and all four children all had toys, shoes, clothes. Mm -hmm. Emma got the most, a computer. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I about, I could not believe it when on the show then they made it look, they, they had me. Like yeah. he had you. Yeah. Snowed. Exactly. Didn't, and it, he didn't. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I never, they told me to say, you're going to now have him come on a K-1 visa. And remember, I mean, again, like on my refrigerator, I'm really going to take a piece of tape and tape. Well, and aren't you technically still engaged to Brian? <coughs> yes. That's, that's a very good point too. That's a very So that's not point. even feasible right. in reality. Right, exactly. And and that's a thank you for bringing that point up as well mm -hmm. because Vaya called me one day after I was back from Belize and she was like, "I need the proof that you and Ryan are no longer engaged." So I had gotten this piece of paper from the embassy saying that the that the K1 was valid for 90 days. So it was going to expire at the end of September. So, and it was already past that. So I sent that to her. Well, two, three weeks later, I got a letter in the mail that said, you and Ryan are still engaged that due to COVID, but you know, all of that paperwork you got is null and void. So you need to take care of that. Well, they had told me, they said, you need to get that to us. She admitted we are filming Ryan and you know, it, we can be sued if we pay someone and we are going to pay Ryan to be on Bears All. And if, if we don't have proof, we could be sued. So, you know, I wasn't going to lift a finger when I saw that we were still engaged, when I got that thing that the other thing was obsolete and that we were still engaged. But I did call Vaya and said, listen, have Ryan do it. You know, there's two in this in this right, engagement. Right. So you have Ryan do it. And she didn't answer me. And then I, again, it was probably 15, 16 times. I'm like, where's the $4,800, 47, 30, something to be exact. Where is that money for, you know, my medical, the planes that I missed? You know, where is that? And you had bought the tickets for the crew that were traveling with you. Yes. You put their travel expenses on your yes. credit yep, card. Yep, I did. They didn't even have the means or a company card to... No. So you paid for their yeah. airfare as well. Yeah, and they owe you for that, yes. which is ridiculous. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. I mean, they don't even have... No, all, everyone they hire is independent contractors. So no one has a, a, a card. And the cameraman that they gave me didn't own a credit card. He didn't have good enough credit. He, yeah, so, he didn't have anything. He was just like, well, I guess I'm just going to have to stay here until they can fly me out. And you were like, I thought you were supposed to be filming along with us. There were a lot of people that I wanted on set that, that unfortunately didn't get to appear with me because of, of their demands and their demanding ways. So I don't know. It's it, it's it's been a bad experience. It's it's been a terrible experience. But like I did say, I did go into this demanding that they would show the business, mm -hmm. and they did. And that was smart. <laughs> that was very smart. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, at least you got that out of it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yes. And, and now they're saying you're the villain. I'm the, the season, villain. Which I villain. think is great because nobody remembers the nice people. Everybody remembers the villains. Exactly. I yes. think own the villain. <laughs> I own love the villain. I love yeah. I know. I know. It is kind of funny. The villain the of villain. season eight. That's right. <laughs> yes. The person who spends thousands of dollars for a family to keep their, right, you know, right. a roof over their head. Person. 
wasn't, it was a trooper, so we didn't all have to pack up right. and yep. leave, yep. you know, yep. and yet I'm controlling and I'm a villain and I'm mm -hmm. hooked on all kinds of pills and drinking and, and all of that. And there is absolutely, as you've heard from my, my friends um, and people that spend the, the most time around me, there is absolutely no truth to that at all. None. Go back and rewatch, and again, put yourself in my shoes and have that light on you constantly, you know, and again, having the keratoconus, which is terrible, that bright light is absolutely terrible, staring at that for hours, um, and everything else that happened, and remember, I was no longer with Ryan when I flew there. I had to fake that and they wouldn't leave and again i i was scared because of the way they kept calling and calling and one day i finally said to pam i'm shutting my business phone off so then she had so to then i answered and i was like she's quit <laughs> stop calling exactly but no mm -hmm. they do not take no for an answer and even when they would say i like, was the one time i did it this i i got to go to my lake house twice Mm -hmm. twice last year be, um, with because of them and then they called me at the lake house and you need to get home Monday Monday you need to be on yeah, set I remember that yeah exactly so you had to leave early I had to leave early so the two times um, you actually got I, to relax a little bit a little bit a little bit and then I said well how about the expense money you owe me thousands and they said we're gonna send you two thousand I said two thousand you owed me, you know, it was close to 7000 And she says, what, you think we're not good for it? She got very demeaning. <laughs> we're not good for it. I said that. We're not good for it. And I'm like, well, mm -hmm. so far you haven't been. My God, I've, you know, I've been back from Belize eight weeks and, and constantly writes you. My attorney is writing Marsha Meyerberg, their attorney. Listen, here are all the bills. You guys aren't stepping up and taking a responsibility for my client and what she endured. And I do want to quickly let you know, unfortunately, Ed, my attorney is not here. He is ill. He has to have heart surgery um, the day after tomorrow. But he did want to write a quick letter. He actually wrote a very lengthy letter that we obviously don't have time for, but I do want to grab the letter. Um, and basically, he goes on to say the character assassination is so unreasonable. It's it's just it's how does how does one build an extremely successful business after 18 years in a community that has many many Christian people? and Stephanie becomes friends with many of her clients, who would go to her and spend the kind of money, because our, our mm -hmm. things are very expensive. Are expensive. We are very, we are expensive. Um, and who would actually go to her um, and spend that kind of money if they had ever seen her popping pills or if they had ever seen her drunk? The other thing he wants to say about for sharp entertainment Concerning reimbursement, after several weeks, I have received no reply. After being in, in law practice for 65 years, I can say the failure to receive any kind of reply, whether it is a denial, an attempted ex explanation, or any sort of explanation whatsoever is rude and completely unprofessional. And so he goes on to talk about his frustrations and he just said, I apologize for my absence. I wanted to be here, but I could not due to his up upcoming heart surgery. But it's pretty sad that a, an attorney that has practiced 65 years said he has never dealt with someone that doesn't give a response of some sort. We have never gotten a response except one time when I did fly back from Belize, 
Marsha Meyerberg, their attorney, did get a hold of me and did say, our crew informed us after hearing of the concerns of, of the uh, behavior regarding Ryan, we offered to stop the filming and assist with you procuring any medical help, not true at all, that you might need and assist you with reporting or filing anything against Ryan at that time and you decline these offers. Not true whatsoever. They did not offer me any help. And when the doctor did come, it was only because I needed steroid shots because my eyes were almost swollen shut. And then they did not pay for that. They refused to pay for that because they knew I begged and pleaded for two and a half hours to get off set and they would not let me off set. And they thought, oh boy, oh boy. So we bribed her basically to get to Belize after she was very honest with us that Ryan and her had broken up. Then Ryan goes ahead and sexually assaults me and she's bitten head to toe. And they had to know at that time, they had to know with how I was feeling, I couldn't speak. Um, with all of that, they had to know that it was serious. It was very it was. serious thing. So for them, Marsha Meyerberg, the only correspondence we've ever gotten was to lie and say that I was offered medical help and help filing anything against Ryan. Now, how contradictory is that, that they were gonna help me file but then they hire rapist Ryan for Bears All twice. Does, a couple can days I, later. A couple days later. Yes. Yeah. Does can anyone? Yeah. Because I that can't. Makes no sense what's going on. I I can't make any sense of that. Yeah, that just seems ridiculous. I, does that, I mean, can anybody explain why you would if if they were really truly wanting to help me file charges, which again, mm -hmm. ten year it's ten years in Belize. If mm -hmm. I if I and I still have time to pursue that if I ever do. It's just all about making the show more interesting. That's the only thing they care right. about. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. So anyway, from Marsha Meyerberg, thank you, but no thank you for sending lies. And my attorney, again, says the most unprofessional he has ever seen his entire life. Because usually an attorney, when they write a firm, you get some sort of, even at least a denial, some sort of acknowledgement, whatever it may be, you get something. But again, I've talked to other cast members from past seasons and they said that's their way of handling things. Others who have been extremely upset with the way they lie and manipulate and, you know, and don't pay, um, I even know, and I will not say who, but I know of a couple that told me, and I do have it in an email, that they had to say that they would not film anymore because they hadn't been paid in a year, in an entire year. And they said, you're not gonna film us anymore. Honestly, I should have done the same when they told me to leave my lake house and get back to Grand Rapids. The crew will be there Monday morning, have your hair done by six. <laughs> and I'm like, well, my hairdresser is the one that washes my hair. She's not there. She goes, tell her I'll give her $250. Now that, she did pay. She did pay my hairdresser the 250. They just won't pay me the thousands for the bug bites and the airplanes and you know the hotel airplanes for their camera crew. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. And and the meals, you know, because I got to Belize then two days later than what I was supposed to. So mm -hmm. again, it's I'm going to say this. I guess I shouldn't speak for all reality shows, but I'm going to say this. This. 90 Day Fiance is a fairy tale. So, or <laughs> it's fictitious. It's definitely not a story, uh, a fairy tale right, because right. fairy tales mm -hmm. end well. It is fictitious. So if you like fiction, um, then go ahead and watch it. And please remember that when you are watching it. What I experienced, and you've read other comments from other cast members who I rate, 
hopefully none of them were sexually assaulted or had to be hooked to IVs and be in bed for three months because their joints were so stiff. But mm -hmm. again, it goes to show you, you should hold, you know, to your truth. And I mm -hmm. did hold to my truth that Ryan and I had broken up. And, you know, if I would have stuck to my guns and let them just keep calling me and keep calling, maybe even call the police mm -hmm. and report harassment, mm -hmm. I should have stuck to my guns because therefore then all of the things that I endured and now continue to endure. So I hear, again, I don't read it, but from what others tell me what's online, you know, it's, it's, it's just totally fabricated. Yeah, I mean, just the whole thing, it was, again, it was, it was a crazy experience. Right. And mm -hmm. to think last year we thought that it was just going to be fun. Fun, absolutely <laughs> fun. <laughs> this is going to be fun. This is good. Yeah, this is just going to be great. It was horrible. The, they, <laughs> <laughs> the way they portrayed how the show was going to be, you know, and uh -huh. David Bresnahan, 10 to 12 percent fluff. I thought, all right, fluff meaning, okay, yeah. Ryan and I, you know, we have a little bit more of a tumultuous fight than it really was. Right, you know, right. no, not changing. No, you are going to stay with Ryan. You are still engaged to right, Ryan. Right. You are going to fake it. Our crew is in Grand Rapids. It is the crew is not leaving until you get there. And then not only then when I shut my phone off because I couldn't deal with it anymore, mm -hmm. um, then they went to the business line and right, they harassed right. Pam. Well, I think it's interesting too. They wanted you to specifically pull out your college degrees and show them so they could film all of that. Yes. But they didn't put any of that on the show because that doesn't fit the narrative that right. they switched to. Right. Exactly. We don't want you to look smart. No. Not when you're no. drunk and no. not on and drugs. pills and everything else. And yes, <laughs> and I mean, <laughs> and poor Pam. I mean, because I'm like, I don't know where my four degrees are, Pam. Will you come over? And she's getting up and. You know, I have a fairly large house, and so she's going We're through... digging through everything. Digging through everything. <laughs> and, and again, the same thing with my brother, being a nuclear medicine physician. We need that, you know. Hillbilly has gotten us this far. We now need a different demographic, and you and your brother are going to do that for us. And so, you know, they had us pull out all these degrees and talk about every degree. Did you see that? No, you didn't see that at all. No. Did you see my brother? Yes. They gave one little clip that they played with my attorney, Ed Wolven. Um, they played that the Saturday night before. I think it was like a 15-minute clip of them um, with me, with them saying, you need a prenuptial agreement. You are not getting on that plane without a prenuptial agreement. But other than that, they were so mad because my brother was texting me, hey, these idiots are texting me. And telling mm -hmm. me to get to your house, I am not being filmed. And I said to them, I said, Leave them he, alone. He, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I said, you know, he was appalled that I even wanted to be on your five and dime show. <laughs> right. You right. know, and right. you are not going to disrupt him. Don't you ever call him again. Mm -hmm. And the scene, by the way, they wanted him here for was because they wanted me at the time, Belize was still shut down. So they wanted to fly Ryan and I into Cancun and yeah. film there. Mm -hmm. So they that's said, right. that's nice, a crap show. Oh, that's, I mean, we could talk for three hours on what happened there. Mm -hmm. But to narrow it down, basically what happened is, of course, they don't pay any of that, but they said, you know, would you hire a private plane? And I said, I did find one for 16000 and they said, and I said, you know, I'll pay for that to get him to Belize so we can film this. And this is before, by the way, this is before I was being bribed <laughs> by Ryan. And um, basically the producer then said, get them on the phone. We want that all discussed like on air, how you're paying. We want that in there that you're paying 16000 That's going to look great for the show. Mm -hmm. We've never had a private plane or anyone that can afford a private plane. And anyway, they, they, they got him on and he, they went, wait a minute here. Our client is Stephanie. 
what you're wanting me to do what on TLC? Mm -hmm. And she goes, you need to say the price. You need to say Ryan's name. You need to say all of that. He says, I'm not doing any such thing on TV. Right. And the producer said, fine, we'll find somebody else. Yep. And hung up. Find someone else. They in the middle of the, the, the jet that you had negotiated. Yes. No, she had finally found a jet, and yes. then they're like, we'll find someone else. And Stoppy's like, what? Yes. And Where are we going to find somebody else? Yes, exactly. For so, 16000 Yeah, 16000 And for her, like dollars. next weekend or whatever right. it was. It was yes. like a short time. Exactly. It was like, it was a miracle to find that one. Yes, right. exactly. And, and then Big Shot, the Big Shot producer, will find somebody else. We, what the hell? Yep. You you are not yeah, for an We is you. We is <laughs> like a jet that was the only one left by the time I found one, and it was getting close to going to Can we were going to Cancun was thirty six thousand, and I said I am not paying thirty six thousand. No, we will wait and see if the border is open. And like, right. oh my God, do you know how much money we have into you, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. Do you know how much money? You know, I mean, I'm taking off of work, working for probably three bucks an hour after all of the filming I had exactly. done. Exactly. And they're saying to me, do you know how much money we have in the U? You mm -hmm. know, you need to get that jet for 36000 And I'm like, no, there will be no jet for 36000 mm -hmm. So finally, the resolution finally came because Belize did open and we were able to fly again that I had to then end up paying for three tickets mm -hmm. instead of the one because yep. I couldn't get on the plane because my guy had all of the camera equipment. They said, you have to be here three hours early for international when you have this kind of equipment. And so, you know, again, something else that was just a cluster I mean, again, we could go on hours and hours, mm -hmm. but the fact remains, you know, I wanted my friends here, the ones that were on the show, the one that on, couldn't be on the show due to their quick, we're going to be, we're going to be there in three days. Everybody needs their tests and he didn't have time for that. Um, and you know, so yeah. I mean, I wanted, how many times did we all get tested? Oh, no, seriously. Oh, well, I mean, I got tested. We were on what, what that one time. Yeah, but we still, they, they're coming and who knows if they need you or not. Everybody has to go get tested. It's like, not my I nose know. again. I know. Oh. Yeah, no, I was tested. <laughs> I was tested at least 12 times. Oh, yeah. At least. <laughs> yeah, they rescheduled what they wanted to film every time they came. Yes, too. yes. They would absolutely. say they wanted to film certain things mm -hmm. and certain people and then. Everyone would go get tested, and then they would change their yeah. plan every single time. And your day. test is only good for three days, mm -hmm, so it's yeah. just like, well, everybody's past that limit, and it's just mm -hmm. like people can't just stop what they're doing when they have jobs. Exactly. And go get that done. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah. So I mean, again, you know what? I it's there's been a huge character assassination. If you still want to believe that you know what, that's your business. If if you want to have that small of a mind, perfect. But please know, Ryan and I had broken up. Harris was a fill-in. I had him on standby. Never was I going to have him here on a K-1 visa. I like Emma. I like all of their children. Um, and then for them, last minute, to kind of pull in the scene that makes it look like, Oh, Stephanie's been, you know, duped by the whole family because she just said, oh, she's going to have him here on a K-1 visa. And then the ending scene is he and Emma kissing with the four kids swimming. Again, total fabrication. Never, ever was that going to happen. So, so reality TV is not <laughs> reality. Yes. Again, if Far you... Far from it. Yep. Yep. If you want something fictitious, go ahead and watch 90 Day Fiance. <laughs>